Hello, you got Mr. Smith, 0.5 of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And in this brief video, I just want to talk to you about how to go from filling out or correcting your W-4 to building wealth. See, a lot of times people adjust the form but don't understand that it's a strategy that goes along with it that can allow you to build real wealth. Now, in this video, I won't be showing you how to do the W-4. We've done videos on that, so you can go to our page and see some of the W-4 videos, plus we'll be doing an updated one coming soon. However, this is for the individual who will be or has already corrected their W-4, and they want to understand how to build wealth. Now, we teach strategies and show people exactly how to do it, but I'm at least do a brief run-through to give you an, an example of how you can go from having the W-4 corrected to increasing your cash flow and building wealth. Understand that the W-4 form is a wealth form if you understand it. Don't just adjust the W-4 for the sake of adjusting it just to get in extra money if you're not going to do anything with it to build wealth. So, Without further ado, let's dive in. As you can see, I titled this From W-4 to Wealth. And right now I'm referring to the cash flow manager. The cash flow manager is available in the back office. If uh, you're in my Econ, which is a personal financial success company, then you have access to one of these already. But if you're not, then you might want to strongly consider getting your very own membership. There'll be a link available if you want to get on board and, you know, get access to even more trainings and things that we have that can help you better your finances. But that's what I'm using, the cash flow manager. This is actually considered to be the cash flow strategist. The strategies is the strategy to help you build wealth, and the W-4 is one piece to the puzzle as it relates to building wealth if you work a job. So let's dive in. Top five financial goals. So let's just pick five financial goals that you want to accomplish because, remember, we're talking about building wealth. We're talking about financial freedom. So number one on the list has to be build retirement assets. So we're picking five, and it says, what are your financial goals? Place number one through five in the boxes below. So let's just say that number two is you want to pay off all debts, excluding your mortgage. If you have a mortgage, uh, sometimes paying off all debts, excluding your mortgage, gives you more money to play with as it relates to investment. So we'll just say excluding a mortgage. And if you don't have a mortgage, then, you know, if that's something you want to do, then we'll handle that later. All right, let's just say that number three is you want to increase your income. Now, I'm going to say this because a lot of times people don't think about increasing their income as it relates to hitting their financial goals for some reason. They may think about a pay raise at their job or working overtime, but increasing income can also be you getting a business on the side, you incorporating some other hobbies that may start to produce income. I don't care if you sell things that are around the house or you go to different yard sales and sell it for a high price. I highly recommend any and everybody to create another form of income that brings more cash flow into your household, especially if you have goals that you want to accomplish on a financial tip. So let's make number three, increasing your income. Number four, let's go ahead and do reduce taxes. And I'm going to include that because a lot of times people overlook that as one way or one method of increasing their cash flow. They totally overlook it. For one, it's not taught. It's not taught in schools. And for two, people are terrified as it relates to taxes, as it relates to minimizing those taxes. But that's a huge amount of wealth that you may be giving away if you don't understand the taxes. Now, if you corrected your W-4, that is one form of reducing your taxes. Understand that. But if you increase your income and you do it the right way to where you're building a business, even if it's from the comforts of your home, that allows you to reduce your taxes by default if you keep proper records. So that's why we're going to make that number four. It just goes hand in hand with everything else. And let's just say number five is going to be buy a new home. Now, if you already have a home, then, you know, you don't need to buy a new home. And hopefully you buying a new home would actually be an investment property, which could actually push you even closer to your goals sooner and add assets to your uh, to your balance sheet, which is what you want to do more of, have assets accumulating on your balance sheet. So we got top five, build retirement assets, pay off all debts, exclude mortgage, increase income and reduce taxes and buy a home, preferably an investment property. So part two of this, retirement freedom goal. So this is a question that just basically all about you. What is your retirement freedom goal? We'll go ahead and keep $5,000 in there. Let's just say that your retirement freedom goal of what you want to have at least monthly in income in your retirement, whatever that date is, let's just say it's $5,000. So roughly that's 
Well, exactly, that's $60,000 a year, 5,000 times 12, that's $60,000. So if you want more than that, then your numbers will just increase if you want more. If you need less, then decrease. But let's just do 5000 I think that's a, a good number that people may want in their retirement, which is $60,000 a year. Some people, that you may need triple that, uh, you know, 10 times that, whatever. But let's just use this as an example. So what year at the latest do you plan to retire? Let's just say that you want to retire in 2040. At the time of this recording, it is currently 2019, February 2019. So let's just say you want to retire in 2040, which is 21 years from today. So it gives you a little time to, to play with, but at the same time, you can't play with it. All right, now how much of your monthly retirement income do you expect to receive from Social Security and company paid pension plans? Not what you will receive from 401k, 403b, RA, CDs, etc. So let's just say that you don't have or you're not expecting anything from Social Security. Most people will get something from Social Security, and I say something because it's probably not going to be nowhere near what you expect. And some jobs, or plenty of jobs, don't have pension plans anymore. So let's just assume that you have nothing in this pot. If you do, then that's just bonus money. We're not even going to count it, so we'll leave that blank. Number four, what is the appropriate or the approximate value of your investment portfolio now? That's mutual fund, 401k, IRA, exclude company pay, pensions, and Social Security. So in this one, we told you, not to include the 401k, this one does include that. So that way it balances out. But let's just say that you don't have an investment portfolio at all. So let's just say that that's zero. So we'll leave that zeroed out as well. Now, number five, how much money do you currently invest monthly in long-term savings? Let's say you're not currently investing anything. You're starting from the bottom, which most people are. Don't feel bad. Or they're starting from under the bottom, you know, so they're underground with it. Let's just say you're starting from zero, ground zero. Perfectly fine. Don't feel bad. Don't feel behind because I'm going to show you how you can make it all line up. Number six, how much additional money monthly can you invest into long-term savings? Now, this is what you can do. Don't, don't. So this is not what you're currently doing. This is what you're capable of doing. So let's just say you can squeeze out an extra $100 to invest into your long-term savings on a month-to-month -month basis, $100. Number seven, how much money do you have set aside for emergencies? You need at least six months of living expenses. So let's say you have none. I really want to start from a person who has nothing. So if you have six months worth of living expenses, kudos, hats off to you. If you have close, a little bit under that, kudos, just add to it and, and, and get to at least six months of living expenses. Whatever your scenario is, we're just starting with zero in this example. Do you feel you currently have a plan in place to accomplish your retirement goal in your desired time frame? I'm going to put no because that's most people's true answer. So I'm speaking to the majority. Most people, that's their answer. No, they don't have a game plan, and that's perfectly fine. Debt elimination. Now, in order to avoid this video being too long, I'm going I'm to minimize a couple of things and just make it simple, but hopefully you get the point. So let's just say that you owe in, in the form of debt to Bank of America. Now, this Bank of America example could be an auto loan, could be a mortgage, could be uh, credit cards, all of that. But let's just say that your total balance of everything you owe is a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand that you owe to Bank of America. Now, keep in mind this could be five different debts that you owe. But I don't want to make the video too long and add all of these different columns. I want to make it smooth sailing. And let's just say that your minimum payment. Is two thousand dollars. So that's how much you're currently paying on a month-to-month -month basis to the Bank of America, or to all five of your debts that total up to a hundred thousand dollars. Let's go to part four: recurring monthly expenses. Now it says, in saving on consumer spending, if saving on consumer spending will help you get on the road to reaching your financial goals, would you be willing to look at some possible areas to save? So what this is saying is. On some of your monthly expenses, are there some ways that you can save money? So if you have cable, can you cut off the cable completely? Can you get a, a plan that allows you to save $10, $12, $15, whatever that is? But let's just say that you, you are already down to the bare minimum and you can't go any lower, so we can't find any new money inside of your expenses. So we won't put anything here. We'll keep this at a zero. I want to show you how just simple tweaks can really build wealth. And we haven't even got to the portion that incorporates the W-4. So bear with me. Hang tight. So right now I'm just going to hit save. Going to hit save. And what it does is go ahead and kind of populate 
you a, you a number. So it just pretty much refreshed everything that we put. I don't have to do a recap because hopefully it's first on your mind, and plus you can always hit rewind. Now let's hit save and return the list. That's what I should have did at first. Now from WEF to I mean from the W4 to WEF. So let's go to Part B because we were already on Part A. So this is Part B. This is your retirement freedom year that you set, which was 2040. You said you wanted to retire by 2040. Let's make it a reality. See, a lot of times people throw out goals, but let's map it out. Let's get your roadmap. Let's get your GPS. You use the GPS to get from point A to point B to get from here to the next state over. Let's use the GPS with your money to get you from where you are now to where you want to go. That's what it's all about, baby. So let's work it out. Retirement freedom year is 2040. So these are your goals. And this example, we're going to be talking about investing. We're going to be talking about growing your money. And the rate of return that we're going to use in this example is 8%. Basically, that means that your money will grow by 8% in the investments that we're just using as a as an estimate here. So if you have, if you see this dollar amount, 750000 for example, your money is in an account that's growing by at least 8%. 8% is really being very conservative because it's people getting double digit rates of return. So 8% is not a stretch. Trust me. So that being said, we're going to leave it at that. Now let's work through. Number one, retirement freedom goal, monthly dollar amount. We already stated that's $5,000 a month, $60,000 a year. Projected monthly dollar amount that will be provided by company and pension. We said that's a zero. Projected net dollar amount needed monthly to reach desired income goal. You still at five thousand because you had nothing here. So you still need five thousand dollars from all in its entirety in order to hit your income goal. Total assets needed to provide desired monthly income goal at an eight percent rate of return. So you need seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in assets generating an eight percent rate of return in order to land on five thousand dollars per month. So, for example, if you had $750,000 in several different investment accounts, spread it out, that was giving you at least an 8% rate of return, that would pay you $60,000 a year, also known as $5,000 per month. So that's how much money you need. A lot of times people just think about the $5,000 a month, but they don't realize they need upwards of a million dollars in order to land on that goal and retire comfortably. So that's what you need based on this example that we're doing now. Number five, projected value of assets on today, zero. Projected net value of assets needed to provide monthly income goal, the whole $750,000 because we have none. Monthly amount needed for investments to build retirement freedom goal. So monthly, based on you wanting to land on 750K, monthly, what you need going towards your investments is 1153.21 cents. See, a lot of times people don't realize that you need a certain amount that you can be putting aside monthly in order to hit your goal in 2040. So in this scenario, $1,153.21 is what you need on a month-to-month -month basis in order to make that happen. So let's find out where we can get that money and make it happen. Dollar amount invested monthly today, none. So we still need that full 1153 in order to hit your desired goal. So let's scroll down. Use the three smart cash flow strategies to acquire the monthly cash flow needed to attain financial success. So the three cash flow strategies that we teach in my econ is basically minimizing taxes and using it to get out of debt. And if you understand business income, then you'll understand how all of those dollar amounts can go towards your investments and boost them up. So as we stated earlier, you need to be making some additional business income of some kind. So let's just say that we assume a cash flow created from business to be $100. So that's the income projection extra hundred dollars a month that's an extra twenty five dollars a week i'm sure something you can do that can produce twenty five dollars a week so we use a hundred dollars monthly in this calculation this number is not intended to show actual income projection of any individual this number is used for illustration purposes only to show how business income can increase cash flow and significantly significantly affect your overall finances when our strategy is applied step two taxes and withholding now this is where the W-4 comes into play. And I know that's why you came to the video. I noticed the title of the video, but this is the step where the W-4 comes into play. We already got out the way that you want to make an additional amount of business income in the form of $100. However, 
a lot of people are leaving a lot of money on the table as it relates to this step here. So step two is all about taxes and withholdings. So cash flow from tax savings and withholding allowance. Let's assume that you can get an extra $250 monthly by maximizing monthly cash flow on your withholdings in your W-4. Now, this is being conservative as well. Reason being, because on average, people are getting in the range of two to eight hundred dollars per month. That's on average. We've seen people get well over a thousand dollars by correcting that W-4. Most people have it filled out incorrectly to the tune of over a hundred million Americans. So it's over a hundred million Americans who are probably losing two to eight hundred dollars per month. So two hundred and fifty is is on the low end of that range. So we're definitely not overdoing the number. We're literally lowballing it because most people are getting above this, but let's just say you get $250. It could be less. And if so, then that's that. But let's just assume $250 is your number that you're getting additionally. So you got $100 that's coming from business income. You got $250 that's coming from the W-4 correction. And you also said that $100 is something that you could contribute, that you can squeeze out in order to contribute towards your financial freedom goal. So that's where this $100 come from. This is the available cash now, not committed to anything. The available cash now that's not committed to anything. Let's keep going. Step four, debt elimination. You now have a total of $450 available for debt reduction that was created by step one, two, and three. Hope you're following me. So $100 from business income plus $250 from the tax withholding, correct, and the W-4 is $350 plus the $100 that you can squeeze out in order to make sure you hit your goals. That's a total of $450 that came from step one, two, and three. Now, of this money, of this $450, Let's say, how it says, how do you wish to use this money? Let's say you don't have any emergency fund like we stated, and you want to contribute $200 of it to your emergency fund. 200 of that 450 goes to your emergency fund. Now, keep in mind, before I even calculate this up, offer this example alone, $450 that was created from steps one, two, and three, put you in a position to where you would eliminate your debt in 41 months. 41 months because you were paying $2,000 to your overall debt. Your new payment is the $2,000 plus the $450 that we created in steps one, two, and three, which allowed you to terminate your debt in 41 months. It's 2019 now. You'll be completely debt-free by 2022. Completely debt-free. Now, let's scroll down before we get to the toggling with any different any numbers. Now, let's just say once you're debt-free, Instead of you paying that $2,450 or that $2, towards your debt because it no longer exists, let's say you just took that whole $2,450 and start applying it to your investments that's getting you 8% annual rate of return. If you do that year after year, so you're debt-free 2022 and you're investing. So 2023, 2024, 2025, all the way down, guess what? Boom! Congratulations. You have achieved financial freedom. And if you look, you achieve financial freedom in 2036, not 2040. You still have four years to play with because 2040 was your retirement goal, all because you understood and implemented the strategies and used the W-4 to build wealth, not just get extra money. See, it's keys to it, but you got to understand how to turn the keys if you want to unlock the doors that lead to financial freedom. I hope you caught that because a lot of people are just a W-4, but they don't use it to build wealth. And if they use it to build wealth, they hit their financial freedom goal well before the time that they set out for themselves. So now they can retire when they deem necessary because retirement is not based on age. It's based on money. So if you thought you were going to retire in 2040, guess what? You're in a position now you can retire Four years early. Do you know how many of your colleagues or coworkers will still be working because they did not put a game plan in place? And this is without making any adjustments to it. So let's just say, for example, that you decided, okay, you know, you want to put $200 towards the emergency fund. So that way you can have that intact. Not all your money is going towards, you know, investing. So we're just putting $200 towards the emergency fund. Uh, 
cash for investments, personal use. And let's save that number and just see how much it offsets it. So instead of 41 months to terminate your debt, you just added four more months. So 45 months added. I mean, just 45 months in order to hit your goal. So it didn't change it that much, but now you at least got an emergency fund in place because you decided to take a portion of that and apply it to your e-fund. Guess what? You still hit your financial freedom goal in a timely fashion, 2037. Now, that's major because you put some money away to save and you put some towards investing and you still hit your goal. Now, let's just say, okay, you, you, you want to use some for personal because a lot of times people see an extra amount of money. It does end up going to personal. I'm not blind to the fact that I know sometimes people want to spend money on themselves. It's their money. They work for it, and you want to create experiences. I get it. I recommend it. I think you should use some money towards yourself from time to time because you work for it, and, you know, life is short, but it's long at the same time. So I want you to be doing both, being wise and having a blast creating memory. So let's just say for personal use, you want to, out of this money, use $450. Let's save it and see how much it offsets your goal. So you got 200 going towards your emergency fund, if you're following, and you got 450 that you're using on yourself per month that may be added up and you taking a trip or whatever it is that you're doing. So let's just see how much it offsets your goal. Okay, now, now we're talking. So now what this did was push you outside of your 2040 retirement goal because you wanted to splurge on yourself a little bit. No problem. So your retirement goal now is hit in 2042. Remember, your retirement goal is 750000 So actually, you would have hit 750000 before 2042, but based on an annual basis, then you know, it's, it pushed out to 2042. If you look previously on the last example, it was right at, 760,000 by the year 2036. So let's say you don't want to stretch it out past 2040. You want to retire by 2040 and you're set in stone, but you still want to apply some to personal use and you still want to put some towards your emergency fund, which is perfectly fine. Let's tweak the process and let's just say, okay, I'm willing to put in more work. Yeah, I'm using a strategy, but what if I could, I could do better than $100 a month in business income, money made on the side? I can join my econ and show people how they can get their own game plan, better their finances. We show people how to better their credit, the whole nine, everything you need financially for personal financial success is in our hook. So let's just say you want to expose people to this information because you don't want to be on this journey of financial freedom alone. You don't want to retire comfortably while all of your good friends still got 10 years left to work, but you're retired. Retirement is probably not going to be fun if you don't have any of your friends or people to, to enjoy it with. Sometimes that's what it's all about. Being retired but not having people to enjoy it with can probably get a little boring. But let's say you want to help some of those people so you can have some retirement buddies who all have their money together and they're not borrowing or asking you for your money that you work hard to grow and keep. So let's just say you say, look, I can make an extra $500 a month. That's $125 a week. I can make an extra $500 per month. Let's see what that does to your goal because you splurging a little bit, four fifty dollars a month push you outside of your goal. So let's just see. If you made just an extra $500 in conjunction to all of this, what it can do. So if you, as you can see, business income, we increased it from $100 to $500. Still got the tax withholding set at $250. Still got the emergency fund set at $200. Uh-oh, look what just happened. Because you decided to put in some work and grow a business, helping others or whatever your other business endeavor may be, your months to retirement dropped to 38. Now, I'm going to do a recap. At first, it was 41. Then it switched to 45 based on some adjustments we made. Now, we decided to make more money by helping others or sharing a good product or service that we that we feel comfortable sharing and we were able to minimize our months 
to terminate our debt down to 38. Let's see what else happened. Congratulations, you have achieved financial freedom and you're back at 2037, but now you're splurging during the process, being able to contribute $450 to personal use, and you're still putting towards your emergency fund, but you have more money due to the fact that you were making side business income. So this is how you take the W-4 and you build wealth with it. It's a process. It's a strategy. I can, go to, I can go deeper into it, but I don't want this video to be extremely long. It was already longer than I wanted it to be because I wanted to just brush through certain things, but I just wanted to drive home the point. Your financial goal was reached because you're over that $750,000 that you needed. If you just continue to do that up until 2042, then you'll have over $1.2 million. And if you continue to do that, then you can have even more. So the choice is yours. Or if you say you want to make even more business income, these numbers just increase. Your retirement goal is just hit sooner. Plus, you'll have more money by your desired date of 2040. So it's all up to you. But let's get in the mindset of taking that W-4 to build wealth, not just get extra cash. So this concludes the video on how to take the W-4 form and build wealth. Now, what I want you to do is, if you're not a part of my account, if you don't have a personal financial success membership and you want to get access to a membership that can show you how to do this and some, show you how to better your credit and some, show you how to make money by helping others do what it is that you're doing and some, get the knowledge, get a network of people that are all across the nation accomplishing their goals in flying colors and some, then I highly recommend you reach out to us or click the available links down below so you can get enrolled today. Let us know when you're in because we got a private group and we want to welcome you in with open arms so we can be on our goals and missions together. See, this is what you got to understand about your goals. If you're doing it alone, it's great because at least you have them. But when you do it with a team of people who are also on a mission to have the same freedom that you have now, that helps you hit it a lot faster because it has some accountability built into it and it taps into the mastermind principles of like minds with a common goal, attacking their goals on a consistent basis. So let's do it together. Building wealth is a team sport. It should not be done alone. That's all I have. This is Mr. Smith, 0.5 of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and you can take the W-4 and build wealth. Salute.